day, guys, and welcome to a, a comprehensive as a, a Melbourne Cup preview as I can put together. Uh, try and go through some of the key replays of, of the main chances. Spend as much time as I can on the main chances. Try not to uh, spend too much time on the also ends, in my opinion, anyway. Get a good look at um, what we can and uh, give you my thoughts on each runner and their lead-up runs and kind of where they're going to be, speed map and all that sort of stuff. So getting straight into it, two-metre rail tomorrow shouldn't make too big a difference. Uh, does look some rain around over the next couple of days. Not significant. Uh, if anything crazy happens, it may hurt the track, but otherwise you'd sort of be expecting a, a four or five, no matter what. They'll probably still put water on the track, I'd imagine. They probably already have. I couldn't see it getting into the sort of seven, eight, nine range, which is the only time it'd really affect the race too much. Really probably would like to see it get to a four or five. Um, uh, just playing the trackers are pretty even. Should be pretty even by then, you'd expect. I, I can't see it drying out crazily, and we I couldn't see a repeat of anything like that sort of inside section being incredible like it was there a few years ago. Hopefully it's sort of uh, fair to run on um, by this stage. Which is uh, it's a good chance. It should should be playing pretty fair. Last year, even it was up the inside a little bit, but keeping an eye on the on the track uh, from a pace perspective, we've got Runaway in, in, Engage, who looks the, the leader. You've got horses like sort of Prince of Aram was put into the race yesterday. Cross Counter probably not keen to sort of roll forward. Finch maybe rolls into an on pace position. Venga Mars kicks up. Uh, Rostopovich, there's all these horses in here. You can sort of see these all horses that are, have got similar early speed. Want to find a, a similar position, so that creates pressure. Uh, not a great deal of speed drawn the inside, so you'd expect these horses to get shuffled back a bit as these horses roll forward. So uh, I'm not a huge warrior about it. And there's more out here. Ace High, uh, Yucatan, and uh, Yucatan, and and others involved, so it's, it's, it's not a, a race of uh, exact science, the Melbourne Cup from a pace perspective, you expect some pressure, and if there isn't, it, you'd expect them to take off earlier and inject pressure, so I'm um, expecting pressure at some point, um, you're, you're playing to a, a medium to fast tempo, there's no doubt about that with good pressure, so uh, from a where horses end up, it's not, it's not possible either, you can sort of say that a horse like uh, Best Solution is far more uh, capable of taking things into its own hands and putting itself into a sort of uh, positive position close to the rail, um, whereas a horse like obviously Yucatan's, you know, going to have to sort of rely on luck or getting back or trying to find cover at some somewhere in the back of something. Uh, obviously, not all horses can gain cover. It's not an exact science. Again, you've got horses like Magic Circle and, and Yucatan who are, are, are main chances here for mine are, are drawn in in those positions where they're going to need luck. You factor that into the price. Uh, and then, and then basically hope for the best when it comes to the the race itself. You know, it's it's it's, um, it's all a, a bit of a, a, a luck game. But uh, these European horses, especially, do appreciate a bit of uh, room to move. So I'm not extremely worried about the ones that have got true staying potential, like the horses like Magic Circle. I would have been far more depressed if it drew one, two, three, four, than drawing seventeen. So each horse is a little bit of a case by case situation. There's no horse that's extremely well set up from the map. I'd say Best Solution's got the, the best of it, drawn seven, six. He's got the chance to sort of be wherever he wants to be. Uh, the one mare in the race is, is Young Star, draws well enough to, to settle in front of a few this time, hopefully. But again, sort of draws inside. There's a lot of pressure coming from across and could easily get shuffled back, which is not a drama because sort of the more it gets shuffled back, the more speed there is, the more the horse is suited. So... Uh, Tough map, anyone who tries to say this horse is going to be there, this is going to be there, kidding themselves really in a race of this nature. Just saying we're expecting pressure and knowing that we're going to need a bit of luck in running uh, with, with a few of the horses, especially the distance queries. So getting into it, uh, four minutes is enough to worry about the setup of the race. So move around. All right, first horse we're looking at is Best Solution. Uh, the, this, this horse was extremely strong win in the Caulfield Cup, obviously had some good form uh, leading into the race, now won four in a row, not big margins, but this horse is definitely a quality horse, uh, never been tested beyond the 2,400 metres, a winner from 1,200 to 2,400 metres, pardon me, at this point, 
So uh, we know it, it, it sort of runs that, but it doesn't run 3200. It's a certain query. What I want to show here, so we'll show the, the replay of the Caulfield Cup first. So in this race, we've got Cliffs of Mar, uh, Cliffs, I'm, I'm not even going to pretend to be able to pretend, uh, pronounce some of these horses' names. Uh, Youngstar, Ace High, Ventura Storm, Venga Mask, Soundcheck, and Chestnut Coat all go around in this race, so I'll have a quick look at all of them. I won't keep going over and over them. Uh, no real point looking too much at the start. The only thing I'll sort of point out here that this is uh, Chestnut Coat, so it, it, it's the Japanese horse that really hadn't seen a, hadn't performed on, on soft ground. And he's, he's come to Australia, he's on soft ground, he's drawn wide and working. This is the winner, Best Solution, who ends up lobbing in a, a nice position, one out, one back. I think Cliffs of Moe is back in here. Uh, who else are we looking for? Ventura Storms out the back on the fence. Young Stars even you know, end up behind it. It's outside it currently with the light blue and the red cap. Uh, Ace High straight to the front. Is that it? I think that's it. So as we go on, nothing really happens in the first half of the race. They set an even tempo, not a fast tempo, and they get home quick. So it's a slow tempo, but, but it is sort of a, a, a solid tempo built into a fast tempo around good time, so solid time. So uh, again, we're sort of looking here, nothing really happening. That was sound check still out wide here, so you can see it's worked throughout the entire race. Ends up getting beaten quite a fair way, but uh, for gift performance as a horse, you can throw an exotic here for mine. We'll talk about it more. So go on. So here goes the pressure. We've got Taj Mahal taking off, and you see the best solution decides just sees him out of the corner of his eye and goes with him. So this is a fair way from home. I've got to say, so this is a side ends up dropping out from a leading position after sort of setting that tempo. Uh, you've got Ventura Storm, Young Star. Uh, who else is back there? Soundcheck. All left flat footed when this Moves sort of move takes, takes off. And so, this is a real positive for me that Best Solution was able to make that early move. It just showed a bit of acceleration to go with Taj Mahal and, and uh, put it away. Then you've got Holmesman sort of had a softer run behind them. And then Cliffs of Moe, who was left a little bit flat footed, but he's he gets onto the back of them pretty cheaply. And these horses have had to make longer runs. Uh, this is the horse that chimes in. This is Cliffs of Moe. Young star back here held up. You can see are already running up the back of them. Uh, I think that's sound check out wide. Sorry, this is uh, young star. Sound check out wide. Uh, Ventura Storm back on the inside with Venjiga Mask and Ace High dropping out. So uh, young stars running into the back of them here. Get out a look at this replay a couple of times. I'll, I'll just go through them. So best solution, sustaining that run. You can see these horses that have had softer trips look like they're going to beat it, and they can't get past him. So that's a great sign for him from going up in distance perspective. He's he's done a, a really good job, stuck on well, not weak late. Holmes was never like, he's only been narrowly, but not dominant over him late across the line. Cliffs of Moore comes at them, peaks on his run. He's had two runs in Australia, so that's a little bit of a worry for him from a further perspective. I, I would have liked to see him attack the line a bit better if he's from the right camp. And then looking at the ones that are finishing off, uh, we've got Red Verdans being six hundred red ace high as uh, gone. Young Star's the main one. Sound check behind it. Uh, Venture Storm obviously the came out won the Moon Valley Cup from this, so it's a good pointer to say that this form is okay. These horses held up on the inside. Benjamin Mask are trying to get around Ace High Skills. And Young Star, who's not in the picture, it was harder to come wide here this day. The two looks like it was inside was a little bit better. So this effort to finish on strongly out wide, even though you don't get to see her, is, is very good. So she's had the, the pattern against the bias and the pace. She's done a really good job. You can see she's, she's not weak through the line. She doesn't pull up or anything like that. Neither do these two horses. And, and I do think this horse is a leading player. Uh, best solution. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not just sort of talking about how I'm going to look at these. Like when they've had a run here, I don't want to look too deeply into their form back home. I just want to see what they've done here, how they've travelled. It gives you a better guide without clouding it. I have gone back through and looked at the replays, but... Uh, what they've done here seems far more important to me than what they've done in their previous their previous lives is what I call it back home even though it was only 48 days ago uh, that it ran it um, and, and, and won its last start so 
Uh, draws nicely. Got some acceleration. The only thing it does in the Antlebox, box, it doesn't six to 3,200. There's a couple of horses in the same frame as this, but this is a leading chance for mine. And the other horse that I wanted to really, I um, thought was good out of that race was Yonks Young Stars, just given no chance at all. Uh, Chestnut Coat. Is it forgive? Can I can throw it in for place? I thought it wasn't too bad. It was a forgive run out of that race. Uh, obviously, Venturist don't come out and run well out of that race. It was a forgive. Uh, Ace High is the worry. Cliffs of Moa the worry. Um, just worried. And Venger Mask I thought was a bit plain too. So I uh, just worried about how badly um, Ace High went, obviously. And the Cliffs of Moa didn't hit the line as well as you'd really like to see him do, given the run he had stepping up to this distance. Yeah, yeah, okay. Cliffs of Moa, this next horse we're talking about. Uh, Crawford Stakes is the only other. So it was the run before this run. This is the thing. So he's taken meters, back out of the gates. He's really well. drawn the wide sort of sit back here in the, in the cool more colours. Back last, another really slow tempo here. So very similar tempo to the last day. You see they're already the off, of off and chasing here, putting this sprint on. And this horse gets to the outside and works on quite well. Had 59 kilos here. Obviously a weight for age race and ran home well against the likes of... Ben Battle has just well, best won it from come out and, Sorry, Ben Battle has come out and run second in the Cops played after this. You see through the line, he's strong. So, this, this run was a, a promising run. Peaked again late, which is a worry, but he did have things against him. So, twice in a row, he's peaked against late, but he's had things against him. So, he's not a complete pen through job. Uh, he is a winner only up to 2,075 metres at this point. So, it, it, for me, he's a huge query at the 32. And I'm probably just going to risk him from a win perspective and might throw him in the minor placing, sir, third and fourth in your, in your trifectas and first fours. Magic Circle. Very, very interesting horse. Another horse you've got to kind of forgive his previous life uh, before he went to the Ian Williams yard. Uh, now looking at his, his two runs since joining this stable. Uh, I'll, I'll just... can't get them there, so here's... Uh, Here's the replay. So this is his first. This is the Chester handicap. And he's now only Lewis. two lengths off the lead. Sits Time for study and Granby so the white well jacket next. From Fun Mac and up he here and so third like with who dares like wins. Magic really Circle has been pulled out the grey jacket. Race, he's nice running on then. Time to study. Jukebox it. drive yeah, heading yeah, down towards the last furlong. But here goes Magic Circle now sweeping through to take over. Magic Circle powers to the front, draws away from Fun Mac and Dubai 50. Granberry has pulled the rabbit out of the hat here. And Magic Circle runs riot to very, win the 188 good. Betchester Cup very from good. Fun Mac. It's very close for third between Who Dares Wins and, and Dubawi 50. Uh, hang on, I'll bring all of these down. He went to Sandown after this in the Group 3 Henry Stakes. Glory, the leaders, stable companion, so back in third, here. Montalius will do, and so he's swinging right down the arm magic circle. Just in behind the them here, the three backs inside. Zoya, no study, one to the bend, weekender, from the front, he's got no from time to study. That's the key Coming to this horse. On the far what you like here is that he sort of travels into the race on the bridle, which is what you like to see. You don't want to see a horse Glory, lacking acceleration, and, and, and what he does is he travels into the race while these horses are all already one batting. He's travelling nicely, as you can see. Well now, as Frankie De Tori pulls his whip through, a, Magic Circle a bit from weekend, and then Red Verdon stays on, then time to study, on inside the final quarter mile, it's Magic Circle so Red that now kicks on race, here and begins uh, to draw away, just as he did round so the Rudy, and Magic Circle, because a massively improved star coming away from Red Verdon weekend, time to study at Mount Moriah, and Magic Circle doubles up the Chester Cup, and now the Henry II stays. A little bit of a question mark over the depth of his form. Form. That's not a big query for me. I, I just love the way he won. So that, that win there was 3,264 metres. The one before it was 3,750 metres. I've got no worry about this horse sitting wide. Uh, I like to see him sort of three wide cover midfield. A little bit worse, no drama at all. He's going to work into the race. He's going to keep coming. The worry is that he's uh, 166 days since that, that performance there. So that was the 24th of May. 
he, he looks great, word is he's working well, everything's great, everything's on track. We haven't seen him run here. If I had seen him run here and he hadn't done anything, uh, even got back and finished off something like that Cliffs uh, first first run we just watched there where he sort of got back to last, was pace affected and and, and run fourth or fifth, I'd, I'd be in love with him. Just that question mark over whether he's ready to rumble. If he is, I can't see him running it, doing anything but running well. Uh, the... The owner's obviously flamboyant and, and bullish about its chances. Can't really factor that in, but it is, you know, it is a factor that the horse has obviously travelled well and and doing well because otherwise he'd, he'd sort of you'd think he'd be a little bit more sheepy, surely. So, uh, Magic Circle, a huge player for mine. He's going to get back. I'm not worried about his gait, and I think he's going to finish off strong. He's got the attributes I love. A bit of acceleration, he can cruise into a race and then sprint off that and maintain it, which is what you want to see for mine. Uh, as I'm just sort of kind of repeating myself, but yeah, he's got a lot of positives about him. Magic Circle. Chestnut Coat, we've already looked at. Uh, I did have his replay there of his 10 0 show run, which is probably worth watching. Um, He, he's a he's a one pace horse, and I don't have the replay here. I had it on before, so there's no really point to go through. He he sits sort of midfieldish, he whacks away, he keeps coming. That is 3,200 meters at, at, at their highest level, and that is good form for a race of this nature. So how far was he beaten? Not far at all. I think he was a bit a length and a half or something like that. 1.8 lengths. The the run before that was also good, and. Then he came out and, and dropped in distance before coming here. So he's 146 days before that run at, at, at Mel, in Melbourne. You can see that he's never seen a, a soft track in his career. He's, he's run into a soft track. He's run into a, a wide without cover position. And he now draws gate four. I'm happy to throw him in in the lower end of the... In the uh, sort of, even I wouldn't be crazy because I think he's going to be a big odd throwing him in second, third and fourth. I doubt he can win, but second, third and fourth. Uh, for exotic players, he could throw some big, uh, big value in if he if he improves as he possibly can. Uh, we've got Muntaha here, last start Ebor winner, seventy three days since then. He's a, he's a winner from twenty four hundred to twenty seven and eighty seven, which I believe is the Ebor. So we'll go back and look at it. It's an important lead up. Get rid of that. Uh, here's the Igor Montaha. So just now he's third from Whiskey now. Sour in a purple and yellow jacket, mid division to Fun Mac Mountain oh, Bell. Buried at so. last of the 20 runners, and they've already moved past halfway and in the sky bet. Igor. So the oh, so moves this up to press the pace. At the other end of the so field, time to study is the races. overall back mark. Nothing. His saunter sure, with a green really cap important. is also in rear. So he, he slots, so he sits, sits wide, sits wide, sits wide. Allows him to find his feet and slots in three wide, and I'm almost certain he's got cover for the whole race. So, to, so he, he slotted in here, uh, 20 to 1 he was in this race, so the, here he is, strides into the race. Fred the eye of the needle, he's won from the right, he's here. closing in, down to the last quarter mile, Frankie in front on Weekender, oh, Montaha the on the near like side, coming a challenge, the then see the line crowned eagle, Stratum has had a torrid run in behind, he can't get there, Montaha and Jim Crowley now come sweeping through to take it up on Weekender, they're three lengths clear of see the line, and Montaha is galloping on strongly, drawing clear in the shadows of the post, the former champion Jim Crowley strikes in the sky bed Ebor, and Montaha Oh, runs right to win. Have a good win, great ride, but good merit in the win and strength to the line. I'm a little bit concerned that he doesn't have that dash of a, of a magic circle, a Yucatan, a, a best solution, and that may just put him behind the eight ball, but I'm not penning him at all. I think he's definitely a winning chance, but I'm, I'm probably having him a second, third, and fourth. I definitely think he runs well here. Montaha, it's a shame that he hasn't had a run here also, and i uh, Got no real query over him running the trip. I think he's he's one that looks pretty safe, uh, even though he's he's not being tested either. Past twenty seven eighty seven, which is what that win there was there. But as you can see, he sort of was building off it and wasn't stopping. Uh, sound check we've looked at. He, he was in that best solution race behind Holmes and clicks some clicks some more. I think they call it. Uh, this horse really needs to find something, and, and not a horse I want to spend too much time on. Who Shot the Barman comes out of the Mooney Valley Cup. 
quick look at it because Ventura Storm and it were both in the race. So he was sort of shuffled back here. Ventura Storm box seated. It was hard to run on. Ventura Storm obviously aided by that. I think Red Cardinals in here drops out too. So they're the three out of this race. Uh, we get to the business end and, and Ventura Storm's uh, right in a nice position here. Who shot the Barman's not? And Red Cardinal was up here and drops out. So they're the two we're kind of looking at. Who shot the Barman in the orange and white? Ventura Storm moving into the race nicely at the, uh, the ideal time. See who shot the Barman trying to weave through. Held up a touch. It's a nice little run through here and, and runs on. Whereas Ventura Storm puts the race away. Uh, not super impressively. Obviously had the right run. Uh, from a uh, Melbourne Cup perspective, I'd probably want to be with who shot the Barman over, over uh, Ventura Storm. And if anything, I probably wanted to be with Usain Bration over the two of them who just missed out on the spot. But uh, they can both run top half, I think. Ventura Storm's not proven at the distance. Who shot the Barman obviously is. Big edge to him of the two. Uh, trying to just knock the two of them over with a one stone here because that's probably their best lead up run and it was fast time and the horse did sit up on a fast speed Ventura Storm which is a good effort but there was a pretty significant advantage to be up and in on the day. Ace High we've looked at, looked to be building into his preparation really well until last start. He, he was given a good ride at round with two starts ago and then last time he struck that wet track and, and leading and, and really didn't do his best. I don't know whether it was the, the track or there was another excuse, but you'd expect him to have to really turn his form right around. Hasn't uh, even been tested outside of a three-year-old grade over the 2,500 metres and run well, so his last run was over 2,400, but he didn't really uh, run it out as we saw. So he's a big query and, and really needs to turn around. He's entitled to be big odds. Marmelo's a horse that uh, we certainly need to spend a, a couple of seconds about. He's, he ran in the Melbourne Cup last year. Uh, we'll have a quick look at that. Um, oh, so he was he was in a good spot last year. He was sort of just, just tracking those leaders. Uh, this is Marmelo. He was in a good spot throughout. One out, one back. He pops out sort of at about the 6 or 700, I think, to roll into the race. This is him now outside the leader. So he led them up into the straight, which is a good, good effort, considering, you know, it's always a... Back pretty solidly run race, they only ran sort of even time here. Well. It was an advantage to be up and in the inside here, so he was in a good position, but you can see that he was quickly no under pressure, and sort of 400 metres from home, he was not a beaten horse, but he was out sprinted by the, the flashier tyres. I expect something to similar to that to happen again here. I, I know that he's racing quite well this time in, and he's, he's probably an improved horse, but you can see that he was quite well beaten here, and really did have his chance in what wasn't a Fast run Melbourne Cup. He found a good position, found a good spot to roll into. They didn't run fast time overall, and it's hard to see this race being a lower quality affair than that one. So uh, he, he's open to improvement. We'll have a quick look at his, his replays uh, this time in. So that was Muntaha. This is Marmelo winning. I believe two starts ago. And Shamir trying to find the right race. He's always good. Cause the that was Kaitser who stayed on, and back in fifth, her number three. That was it's uh, Mikael Bartolin just riding along on that at the moment. Okay. And Ice Breeze will be making a move then rear under, under Vance and Chemineau. But in the home straight, it's Miele Miel out in front. Marmelo in second Small position. Algomita making an effort in third. Followed by Palom. Kite serve under pressure. And then came uh, Ice Breeze. But inside the closing stages, Marmelo bidding to go uh, one best in this race last year. Algomita is giving chase. Palom, but also on the inside, there's Miele Miel. These four cleared the moment from Kite serve. But it's Marmelo for Huey Morrison out in in front, Algometer trying to close, but it's Marmelo from Algometer. Palom was third, and they were clear of kites. He's just going to beat them with his toughness. That was Longchamp. This was Doville. His next start uh, when he goes through it and picks up the lead. Paul Tassie Green and Marmelo are the next two. They followed in turn the weather track to move onto the front. Yellow just does not ask me to follow that one. No move from the Fabre repair. Advantage is long on the outside. Lindy up there on the inner as they go to the 500 race, and so takes full advantage and goes so through it and through picks up the lead. So now Marmelo is in pursuit with nearly the caught. The just, Behind these then, Mele no Neal up on the outside like and Sumion is working hard on Marmelo. Holt Tazzy Green has the lead. Marmelo is now pulled out to try and challenge but Holt Tazzy Green is showing by a couple of lengths and Marmelo is hanging towards the outside and it's still Holt Tazzy Green from Marmelo and nearly caught and Gasperton and Holt Tazzy Green is going to lower the colours of Marmelo. 
Marmelo. Whole Tassie Greens won it. Marmelo in second and back in third, nearly caught. So, win four, number four, Whole Tassie Green. Villiers is a really tough horse to evaluate. You've got to draw a line in him and say he's a, he's a highly brilliant galloper. He's got a great turn of foot. And what's interesting about him is for the turn of foot he's got, he's only ever really won races by narrow margins. Obviously, we'll have a look at this this race here, the Bart Cummings. Go. Uh, he and racing back in the clear field is here. Harris a really front. good ride. De the inside for the time being given a reminder back here he and then is. well back as Jarme with also to the outside pushes out at the right time never Zicada. loses any momentum so it's what he kind on of did lose here is his electric turn of foot he, he has got a, a, sorry, the a small turn of foot here uh, Jarmay a good trying to go with it from yardstick for this race then bon came out with it's a in the state so this is definitely not the strongest form line leading into this race I love that he toughed it out but you see he wasn't a horse you were you super Jarmay certain would be holding on over an extra 700 metres. He's got a lovely turn of foot. He's got to be put to sleep if he doesn't over race and everything goes his way. He did run in the in the Cox Plate as well, which we'll have Stand a quick by. look at. Because Roster Povich. So Roster Povich lobs outside the leader. He's, he's down the bottom, number 24. He did a bit of work to get there. I love that they sort of didn't cuddle him too much. They gave him a nice beat out here and tried to really get him ready for the for the Melbourne Cup. To me, that says he was probably underdone and probably needed the run and, and also probably needed a bit of seasoning. So I, I'm not that keen on Rostopovich, but it's good to see him do a bit here, whereas Avilius was just given a very quiet time of it in the early part, dragged out to last and, and allowed to work home. You can see he's sort of held up in between runners here, which is not ideal for him. And not a bad effort to sort of run fourth behind the likes of uh, Winks, Ben Battle, uh, Humidor, and then whacked away. But you can see uh, it's not a run of a horse that you want to to be really finding coming into a Melbourne Cup. He's not building through the line. He's just a, a solid effort. I know they wouldn't have been too worried about it. It was a, certainly a, not a race that was a target race. It was just a tick over run to get him ready for this. So, Avilius, again, another one that I'm probably not keen to have in the, in the top, but uh, he, he, can, he can run well. Yucatan, forgetting his form provider coming here, he just looks a horse that was a project horse. He was... Uh, obviously very talented early in his career and they, they've chosen to, to get him ready for this race and try and beat the handicapper. He arrived with the 52 kilo uh, weight allotment and was penalised for two and a half kilos for winning uh, just a, a group two race here. And what you'll see is that uh, he drew that well. horribly here, which he draws horribly again. So it's interesting to watch what he does at the, the start here. He's push out up wide. Along so he's just given time to balance up and work in behind them. Uh, he, he's back here, Lord he's back Fandango last basically early, in the second or third last I think. Officially they sort of had him down as uh, as soon as the, they, the race settles he's allowed to stride around them. They didn't go slow here, they went quick. So you know sometimes they can slacken tempo off mid to race and a horse can make an early move he can then not spend too much petrol to get from a, a negative position out the back to a positive position up the front. So the that's not the case here, is what I'm trying to say. They're running along, Rocks, and this horse is making ground against that tempo. So what it's done to get to third Dillon, is plenty of work, is what I'm trying to say. He's then able the to the put them away here and goes to the front. at so the push of a button. Run, uh, the horses on. to highlight here are Prince of Aaron and Brigham Rocks, who came out and ran well in the Lexus winner and ran second in the Lexus yesterday. So obviously this form's held up quite well. And, and what this horse has done from... Yeah, I just want to... Like he's already worked to get to here, so he's made one run. Now he's doing this. So arguably you could say he's made a, a 700 metre run. Obviously, most of it under little pressure, but for a horse to be push button like this, and to go bang, obviously he's caught them a little bit by surprise, which field, is incredible in itself. I, I think Fandango. we probably caught the leader by surprise the way he quickened, but being to put such a margin on these horses Brimham in Rock, such a small amount of time, of he's entitled to get tired to late, and what scares you is he doesn't switch the horse off, he doesn't six, cruise to the line, he physically eases the horse down, so he actually pulls him up there and grabs hold of him, which is a little bit dangerous for mine, but hard to tell what the horse has got in reserve as it sort of 
that builds through the line, do you say, well, he would have won by 10, would he won by 6, would he won by 4? Uh, would he have continued through the line? You can't tell. Like, I like to watch them through the line here when they show this, this shot going ahead. And, and obviously, uh, it's hard to tell what the horse had left. But he's made a long run. He's accelerated. He's done everything you want to see from a high-quality horse. He was penalised to an half kilo as he only gets in with 54 and a half here. And pillow decide. The more I look at that replay, the more I love it, the more I love the horse. I don't care about anything he's done prior. I'm nearly not even caring about him not having a 3,200 metre run under his belt. He's made it like an 800, 900 metre run there on a fast tempo. They've run quick time. What more can you ask from a horse? The only question mark is that he, he's, he's, he's um, eased him down late and you don't know whether he's going to run the 3,200 metres strongly. He's drawn gate 23. I think that'll mean it will get a $7 or $8 price instead of a $4.50 price. And the more I watch it, the more I going to definitely have something on it. And, and there's no doubt that it goes in for me in, in win and place. Um, yeah, sorry, in, in trifectas, quinellas, exactas, exotic, first fours, whatever you're doing, quadrellas, it, this horse cannot be left out. Uh, I know this is 30 minutes in, so we'll try and get rid of some of these horses. Orvray, uh, good, solid form. It, he, his form's on dry tracks. He, he totally forgive that last run. So sort of a length and a half, we've got that Brigham Rocks pointer there. He's, he's run third, fourth in a, in a Sydney Cup. He's got some quality about him, but he's probably lacks enough to, to really get deep into the finish here. The drier the track, the better for this horse. It, it'll run positively, I'd say. It's a good chance to run top half. It's definitely not the worst horse in the race, but I can't have it winning. And uh, I'll probably leave it at that. Finch will show quickly the, his run the in the, the Geelong Cup. So he's the Two white cap, white nose here. He North was West 80 days between runs here. Hakeem. First run for the Waller camp. The and the makes a nice the enough early move here. Finch he's forced McCarty a little bit wide, so doesn't quicken at all, which is a worry. He whacks away. He's a horse that could possibly whack away into a position. But like I'm talking between third and eighth or something like that. I, I can't really see him troubling the winners. He's He's got some solid enough form back in the UK. He's obviously been beaten seven lengths there by Cracksman and four and a half lengths by Cracksman over 2,400 metres. That's good form. He probably needs a wet track to show his best. Uh, I doubt he's going to get a, enough sting out of the ground, but he, he looks well prepared. He looks like he's settled in well, and I could definitely throw him in for, say, fourth in, in first fours, and, and, and that's about it. Red Cardinal, we watched him drop out in the... Mini Valley Cup can't have him, even with the blinkers applied. Von, Von, Venga Mask, similar. He was just beaten too far behind. Best solution off a slow tempo. Uh, he was beaten too far at big odds uh, by Avilius. He was beaten by Night's Watch. He's only ever won sort of 2,500 metre group threes, and, and that was when he was on pace. I don't think he can get away with a race like this, so I'm leaving him out. Ventura Storm, we've talked about. It's, it's, it's run in the Mini Valley Cup. was full of merit, but it did have... Things in its favour. I like that it did race a little bit closer, though. Draws nicely, so you'd expect it to run a positive race, but it's just a matter of whether it can run the 32 out in strong fashion. Uh, actually, another horse I'd probably throw in for fourth at absolute best. I like this horse, the Prince of Aaron. He's got some solid enough form back home, obviously uh, not as deep as some of them, but he, he ran sort of six behind Magic Circle in, in one of those races we watched at Chester. I think that's good enough to run top four. Uh, his, his effort first up was very good. He was left flat-footed and in the wrong spot and was really starting to build his revs. Yesterday, he was a strong winner off a slow tempo, perfect ride. I'm just treating that as an absolutely perfect ideal setup coming into this race on the three-day backup. He's drawn poorly. He needs a bit of luck from there. Uh, he was given a great ride yesterday. So anything like that, again, I can. he's, a, he's the wild card. I'm not saying he can't win, and I'm definitely throwing him in. Cornelis, Trifectus, Exactus, uh, first fours. Uh, we'll have a quick look, sorry, at that that run for people who haven't seen it. Trained by Charlie so he, he was just put to straight into a good position the out of the gate. This is him here, fourth. To go, and is the he, oh, I'll show you from the here. So he, he the comes into the race nicely. Sorry, uh, the outside, yeah, yeah, no, he's already up there. Away, rising red so this is him, Jarmain coming around in fourth. Northwest Passion, sorry, similar colours. He's got a little turn of foot, and then he maintains it. I'm not saying that he's got a brilliant turn of foot, and you wouldn't expect 
anything to show a, a, a smart. See, there's an extend, so he does have a turn of foot. There's no doubt about that. The second horse here, Bringer Rocks, is a really talented type who's got some really strong, consistent form, and he's never going to get past him. Uh, I, I actually really like this horse, Prince of Aaron. I think he's, a, he's actually a knockout winning chance the way the more I look at it. So I, I, I like this horse, uh, Prince of Aaron. Nikita can't have it all. Uh, beaten 15 lengths behind Ventura Storm in the Mooney Valley Cup. Impossible to come into it off that. Uh, did run in this race 12 months ago. Was a solid enough fifth, but did pinch runs up the inside from back in the pack and never really looked like running into it at all. I don't think it's in the same form, and I'm happy to happy to risk it. Sir Charles Road, a third in the Bendigo Cup, which was running fast time. I'm not knocking the horse, but... Uh, its form doesn't look deep enough to really trouble these. It is uh, beaten one and a half uh, length. Sorry, it was beaten a length in the Sydney Cup. It was beaten, what is it, 1.4 in the, I'd say that was an Auckland Cup uh, last year. Well, sorry, early this year. So it runs the trip. It's not drawn horrifically. It's far from the worst in the race, but it's it's entitled to be a price uh, here. Uh, Zicada is, is entitled to be the roughie of the field, beaten 8, 8, 7, 10 at huge odds uh, in its last few runs. Uh, runaway, we, we saw it in the Geelong Cup. I didn't really show it at the end of the race just to show how he sort of was through the line here. So he's in front. He's kicked on strongly. He's a winner of St. Ledger, a three-year-old 2,800 metre race at Flemington. He's now a winner of the Geelong Cup. He's an on-pace, one-dimensional type. But he's got, a, he's got a big heart, and he'll probably lead him up here for a long way, but he's never met, seen anything like this. He's never seen a 24-horse field. He's never seen uh, anything with a pressure from Melbourne Cup, and, and he's probably in, in for a bit of pain. He, he's sat, he's running a 3,200-metre listed race and knocked up uh, off a soft tempo there. That was as a three-year-old. Obviously more season now, but, you know, 17, 2, 24, up to 32. It is Gay Waterhouse, and she's a miracle worker, but she needs to find some sort of miracle to get this horse home. Young Star is a horse that I've got plenty of time for. I uh, don't really think we need to show the replay of Winks over 2,000 metres. I love the build-up. It's had 14, 15, 2,024. I've seen the replay of this horse where it got back to the hopeless position it was in. I think it's a better horse on top of the ground, uh, so that'll that'll suit it here, hopefully. Uh, only 51 kilos, which is what it carried, 51.5 in the Caulfield Cup. I think this horse is a real knockout. I, I know it, it needs a good ride. It's, uh, it's drawn okay. Uh, Craig Williams has never sat on the horse before, which is a little bit of a query, and it's a bit interesting that that uh, Kara McAvoy gets off it to ride, uh, to ride Charlie Appleby's horse here. But uh, that is a little worry and a little question mark for me. But it, this is a good horse, young star, and, and she just looks like she wants to stay. And I think she will just keep coming off a quiet ride, and, and she's a knockout chance. Definitely goes in second, third, fourth in, in Cornell's Trifex exactors as well. Um, probably only a minor winning chance, but it is a knockout chance. Now we've got... Cross counter bandages on 76 days since I've seen a couple of replays of this horse uh, beaten behind Baghdad here. So why I wanted to show this King George the fifth stakes is simply because it was the only time it's been in a big field. Um, wide outside downdraft in the white it's a length and a half ahead of those is the white sleeves of downdraft and Lachine Castle's in company with them as well sent from the rear of the field after the leaders Baghdad and Corgi are either side of first 11 Bailey's accelerator is still there downdraft behind those Occupy and cross counter in the blue still have a chance Baghdad Andre Edzeni leading now to Corgi and Jim Crowley with a purple sleeve jacket then first 11 Frankie on the running rail heading towards the line Baghdad is trying to fend off Corgi here come first 11 oh there, very tight Baghdad first 11 and Corgi uh, for our two lengths nothing too scary then we go to Goodwood again I'll show it's in the oh, centre yeah. coming so through to chat oh, Bombix is a length and a half behind him field. Sun Maiden she's still just the back marker of the quartet just a little unbalanced as they begin running downhill so heading towards the home straight on the left in blue cross counter yeah, on the right in, in silver DXB, DXB. there's very little between them Bombix is still behind him in, in third Sun Maiden three parts of a length but used to lead those position cross counter Bombix cross counter has seen them all 
foul off. He's extended now. He's fallen here. Inside the last furlong, it's cross country. William Buick who is striding towards the line for a wide margin win in the Qatar Gordon Stakes. Godolphin winner has cross counter wins. DXB was second. Bombix in third. Sun Maiden behind in fourth. So Godolphin's here. But what was he up against? This is his latest run. This is the, the Voltiger stakes. Muldoon ahead of the Pentagon. Uh, another white another places and field. Of the bend and Nelson is beside yeah, Wells Fargo the outside, with a swift moving company with cross counter as the race develops. Two gardens with a little bit of catch up to do as out in front, Old Persian White and the good old Fargo, Savannah Star. Q Gardens is travel. Old Persian out in front from cross counter. Q Gardens has three lengths to find, then Wells Fargo, Old Persian digging in for James Doyle. Cross counter for William Buick. Q Gardens has still got two lengths to find. Old Persian now the in front, closing on the run to the line is cross counter. Old Persian just about last. Old Persian leads over Godolphin 1 2. Leading cross counter in third place is Q Gardens 4. Uh, overall, I'm not real sure. It's, uh, this is the horse that Karen McAvoy is riding. I'm a little bit surprised he's got off Young Star, as I said, to ride it, but I think they're both similar chances. I'd probably rather be on Young Star, but I'd say they're probably sort of 20 to 1 chances in the race. Alamo and Donahue the and dropped in Giuseppe Garibaldi and Emmett McNamara. Seven and, and a half furlongs to go round towards the Rostra Povich and other English Derby. They're racing up towards uh, the finish. Uh, then Calixan and Stella Mass round the outside the King and then Giuseppe Garibaldi racing on up the straight with two to go and Rostra Povich takes up the lead. Headmaster of Reality, the King on the outside. Giuseppe Garibaldi is staying on towards the far side then Stella Mass and Calixana. But it's Rostropovich in front with a furlong to go. Chased by stable companion Giuseppe Garibaldi. The King's not out of it on the near side. They're racing up towards the finish. Rostropovich from Giuseppe Garibaldi and the King. Rostropovich wins it from Giuseppe Garibaldi and the King. A 1-2 for it. I want to back off off that replay. Cross counters never been past a mile and a half. So 2,500 metres. That's his worry for mine. Obviously, Young Star's in a very similar mould. They've both got similar weights. Cross counters drawn poorly. Yeah, again, I, I think this horse is probably a third or fourth at best. I think Rostopovich is fourth at best. Uh, Young Star is definitely a, a sort of a knockout chance from a better draw, and I think it's just got a little bit more upside. So, just quickly recapping on it, I really like Best Solution. I think it's a horse that needs to prove that it gets the trip, but it gets the right run and, and should run well. Magic Circle, love it, love it, love it. Just has to handle this 166 days off. Montaha, very similar. It looks a horse that's going to build through its gears, the, the edge to magic circle over Montaha, but a horse that just extended nicely late, and it's going to run the 3,200. I like that. Um, Marmamello is a horse that looks like it's probably going to sit on the tempo, on the speed, and, and whack away nicely, but I think he's a level below those those couple, and he has a nice draw. Uh, Yucatan just, just looks all over a freak to me. That was just an incredible win, and I, I've got to have it on top, uh, regardless of not knowing what it was going to do there late and regardless of uh, not knowing if it can run the 3200 meters out heading down further i like prince of aran set up i think he's building up nicely for a career best effort coming into this race he's obviously thriving in australia uh, and then we're talking young star cross counter but for me i think the three main winning chances clearly best solution magic circle and yucatan uh, then from Muntaha, Marmella. Uh, who else have we got? Youngstar, a, a clear knockout down the bottom. And I'm throwing in Cross Counter and Cliff Samoa for, for minor placing. So uh, I think they're the three clear main winning chances, to be honest. I, I, I really do. I, I just loved Best Solutions' effort in the lead up. And I think that uh, Magic Circle's the query runner that's worth taking the punt with 166 days over Muntahar. I think it's the, got the pick of the two of those. And this, this horse, Yucatan, just could be anything. Uh, I'll throw my numbers up here at the end of it. Uh, I'll throw my, uh, my written write-up as well with any links that I send out. So any queries, john at racingwatch.com.au. Uh, anything, anytime, any other races. Hopefully you got something out of this. I know it goes for way too long, but it's one race a year that everybody really wants to have a look at. And hopefully, you know, I've covered most bases and, and uh, given you a, a hand in some way to figure out one of the hardest races of the year. Cheers, guys. Thank you.